Hello! This week we look at passage from the Gospel according to Luke, more specifically the chapter 4 verses 14 to 21. And what we found there is a story that happened, happens fairly at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He has started, according to the text, to teach here and there in the area. But most likely, he was just, an, in his hometown, just another guy, you know, like everybody else. Like the son of Joseph and Mary that, you know, got pregnant. Small town. I'm sure nothing changed all those times. They probably what they were saying about him. So what do we learn here? Well, Jesus went to the synagogue like everybody else. And read from a script from the prophet Isaiah. And he says, I'm reading from, well, what he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring the good, good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To, and let the oppressed to go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And if this was not enough, he ends his reading by saying, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. I can only imagine the shock of the people who were there that day because, um, let's, let's be honest, it sounds a little cocky. You know, this little guy from said, hey, I'm the guy you're waiting for. You know, Prophet Isaiah was speaking, me. Of course, <laughs> we know what happened in the story. We have read the Bible, we have heard the story, but the people <laughs> over there did not know what will happen next. And I said, we know the story, we know what happened next, and we know that these words are at the core of Jesus' ministry and Jesus' message through the gospel. And also the path he invited his disciples to follow. And today, 2,000 years later, many would say that maybe we have lost our ways. Because when we hear about Christianity in the news. Let's see, what do we hear? Violence, uh, scandals of all sorts like abuse of power, abuse of money, uh, sexual scandal. And let's be honest here, regardless of denomination, regardless of church, we all have our stories lately. And many say, well, speak about the death of the church, the end of an institution. Because there's the, at least in Western civilization, the churches are empty. And many say, well, why should we still care? Which we'll, why should we still try? You know, we had a good run and it's over. And often when we face time of crisis, what do we hear? Go back to your roots. And before money, before power, before buildings, before committees and budget and manuals of rules and regulations, the core of the Christian message the reason Christianity evolve, thrive, what people knew Christian was how they bring good news to the poor, how they took care and protect the vulnerable, how they bring hope to those who had none. And maybe these days, Instead of using markers to evaluate if a church is thriving, if it's healthy, 
based on how many programs it offer number of membership money in the bank account so on so on so on maybe we should look at those group regardless of size and anything else we live by the standards of taking care of the poor taking care of vulnerable bringing hope to this world how we live our fate and that's what I hope you will try to discover this week how can you regardless if you belong to a church institution or not congregation a church regardless all of this how can you bring good news to the poor take care of vulnerable bring home to, bring hope to people who have none maybe bring home people who are lost in so many ways figuratively or literally and how do we live this and what does it say about us how it moves us how it transforms us how it gives us energy some will not like it some will think that we believe we're better than other nevertheless if we try it if we live by it I believe we will do the right thing I hope you will find this this week I hope you will remain healthy and warm I don't know when and where you're listening here but as I'm recording it's minus 30 outside and it's cold so I hope you're warm and everyone in your life is warm and until next time I remain the lectionary man Reverend Stefan Vermette and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.